Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the CKC channel. I'm your host, Fide Master Calvin Klaassen. And um, yeah, we have another Reflections episode for you, and it's just getting better and better every time. Um, so yeah, I'd just like to thank everybody that has been on the show thus far, um, and for everybody for, for tuning in and supporting. And uh, you know what to do already. I said every week, uh, uh, in and out, that uh, if you are new to the channel, just make sure to press the follow button. It's somewhere down there, a purple heart. And if you cannot press the purple button yet, the, the follow button, then you have to go to Twitch's homepage and just make sure that you sign up. It's completely for free. And uh, then you come back to the channel and you can press the follow button. Of course, if you press the follow button, then you can chat in the chat box. Feel free to ask um, our, our host and special guest some questions. Um, I would love to get a lot of questions. We will have two um, intervals or two, two, two sections, four questions halfway through the show. Uh, around 25 past, we will, we will give a chance to the viewers, or I will read out the viewers' questions. And um, then at the end of the show, if there's any more questions, we will uh, give time for that as well. So, yes, guys. Um, and then something else that I need to mention as well. We've got another special edition of Reflections coming in two days' time on Heritage Day. So this Thursday, we have another special edition of, um, of Reflections. So just make a note of that. Our weekly program is for Tuesdays, 7 p.m. This one will be uh, 6 p.m. on Thursday, but uh, I will um, advertise that again as well. So yeah, so I think we can head straight over to the library. So um, over to, to you, London. Good evening, Calvin, and good evening, uh, Mr. Piet van Sale, and good evening to the viewers. Uh, great being here tonight again, Calvin. Um, and uh, we, we've got a very special guest with us tonight. Uh, anybody that plays chess in South Africa and has played chess in the last uh, few decades will know uh, when Piet van Sale. Uh, Piet, welcome to the show tonight. Thank you, Lennon. Thank you for having me, man. Now, you and I met uh, over the board in the year 2000, and, uh, and in fact, it was an honorable draw that we had played against one another. But um, when I was reading your CV, I noticed that you had, had learned the, the moves in 1958 already. Pete, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, it was... Um, um, we, uh, we, lived in a, well, we, we lived in a place called Namibia, and it was Southwest Africa in those years. And then my father died and we were flung into the world. And we landed up in Joburg and eventually in, in Uppington where my uncle, where I stayed with my uncle and he taught me the moves. And I'll never forget the, the feeling I got when, you know, when I first touched those pieces and I saw how they moved and so on. So that was in 1958. I was already 11 years old by then. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, we, we, we won't reveal your age too much, but, but Pete, it, it, it seemed from your CV, and, and I'll get to your CV when I read it out later, but I want to talk to it. Um, you seem to have had a, a chess explosion around about 1972, and was that because of the fischer Spassky uh, uh, match? That was one of the reasons, yes. Um, in fact, I actually met a guy called Keith Pinar. Uh, he was the first guy that I couldn't beat, you know. I was always a social player and I used to go wherever I went, I beat everybody. And, and then I met this uh, Keith Pinar and I just couldn't beat him. And he then introduced me to the Max Eva Club. In those days, it was um, Dr. Albert van Tetz was the champion, the club champion. And that's where I met the two uh, Maybooms, Gerrit and Kies. I've still got contact with them today. And um, yes, and that, that's when the, uh, the bug bit me, really. That's when I started playing chess. But it, uh, I mean, uh, I did not realize uh, uh, that you had also played for in Cape Town. You had played for Claremont Chess Club. You played for Falls Bay Chess Club, and there was also, a, it seems, an Austrian chess club at some stage. Tell us a bit about your your journey here in Cape Town. Yes, I moved down to Cape Town in 1975, and then um, I joined the. Um, First of all, the, 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 um, the Cayman Chess Club, because that was the biggest club and it was the closest one to me. 
and also Falls Bay. I knew a guy there and uh, I worked for an Austrian company and they, their club was in, at the um, Swiss Soccer Club in Willie Point. Now, I used to play there, but I was the only guy, I never understood what these guys were talking about. They spoke different dialects of German. I don't think they understood what they, one another. <laughs> anyway, I just, I didn't care as long as I played, you know, it was really nice playing with these guys. No, thanks, Pete. And, and, and from there, uh, from Cape Town, you seem to have gone up to, to Transvaal at that stage because your, your CV indicates that you played for the Isco uh, uh, Chess Club uh, in, the, in the Transvaal League. Yeah, that was 1978. Um, Dr. Peter Hangelbrook was the champion there. There was also a guy called Jestens, I've forgotten his name now, but uh, a lot of Dutch players there, and, uh, but Peter Hangelbrook was the champion. So they were much younger Peter Hangelbrook in those days. And, and, and Pete, how was the, the, the league uh, contested those years? Was it the Swiss? Was it the round the robin? How, what was the league like? You know, I can't really remember how we played the thing. You know, we, we used to travel on a week's weekend, uh, on a week uh, evening, you know, during the week. We would travel to Pretoria, Joburg and so on. I don't know how we did it, but anyway, then we would go and play in Pretoria and come back the same evening. And But I can't remember whether it was a Swiss of a round robin, I can't remember that. Yeah. But Pete, those, those were, I mean, uh, uh, to travel from Free State and go play league matches in Pretoria must have been some doing. And uh, and for you, you also became a three-time Free State Open champion. Uh, and But you probably competed over in that Free State uh, championship for quite a long time. Tell us a bit about that. Yes. Um... You know, I, I, I first went to, well, I, I was in Bloemfontein for a short while in 1974, but I moved to, to Bloemfontein permanently in 1979. And then um, I, I, I joined the Bloemfontein Chess Club and, and uh, Free State Chess was very active in those days. We had a, a closed every year, we had a, a open every year, but it was very difficult because the Free State was very strong. To give you an idea, Bloomington Chess Club had 10 guys with 2,000 ratings plus. You know, they had Professor Haynes, 2,200, Richard Morris, 2,200. So it was difficult to get into a Free State team, or even in the, in, it was more difficult to get into the Bloomington Chess Club team than it was to get into the Free State team. My goodness. So. Uh it, it does seem as if uh, uh, those years was quite a, a, a nice period of, of chess for, for Free State. And uh, you became also part of the executive around about 1982. And uh, it seems you you continued on that executive for quite a long time, Pete. Yeah, until now. Well, until 2018 or 19, I'm not sure. Yeah, last year. Yeah. <laughs> the last year. <laughs> no, no, yeah. we will definitely come to your 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 admin abilities on on that mm -hmm. side. Now, Peter, one of the interesting things that that um, I saw that you started coaching at, at a very early age with Richard Morris uh, in some of the uh, areas outside of Bloemfontein in the rural areas. Can you tell us a bit about uh, about that coaching that you and and um, and Richard Morris undertook in those years? Yeah, it was, it was 1982 when uh, a guy called Caesar Fenter from Bethlehem um, asked Richard Morris if he could come and coach in, in Boschla Kong, which is the, uh, the township that's outside Be um, Bethlehem. And Richard asked me to be his assistant, and I jumped for that because, I mean, being with a great man, you know, I really thought that would be brilliant to work with a guy like that. And we started coaching in, in Bosch Lacombe. And um, the wonderful thing is, is that those kids took to chess like a house on fire. And you met one of the players later years. In 2000, he was one of my teammates, uh, um, Tankiso Munyabe. He died at a very young age, but he, 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 were, he played in that team when we played against uh, you guys. And then, um, a uh, guy called Keshla Mofukeng. Keshla is the police champion. He was a police champion a few times. He was also in the Free State team that was the national champion, police champions. Uh, there was a guy called uh, Payas Shabalala. He became the best under 21 player in the country. And all these wow. guys I'm mentioning became Free State champions as well, you know. Yeah. 
Um, the nice thing about them is, you know, we started coaching them. And the thing is, they became so good that we we actually uh, put them in our, uh, for, let them play in our free state tournaments. And they actually made it into the free state teams, which was a bit of a problem in those years because uh, when we we uh, we selected them for the free state team to play in the South African schools championships. Now that was at the height of apartheid, so we uh, we couldn't take those black kids on 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 the bus with the white kids. So uh, that was one of the problems. But Mr. Fenter gave them a car and a driver, and he booked them into a five-star hotel. So, but we sent them. The other problem we had, they couldn't stay in the same hostels, you know. So, um, and that's why we booked them into, into, into the five-star hotel. Fortunately, these guys uh, let them play. I don't know why they would allow them to play in the same hall, but they couldn't sleep in the same, same hostel or ride on the same bus and stuff like that. But anyway, that was politics. So. But, uh, but Peter, I mean, that is what... Now, that's one of the things that I always recognize about Free State, that you always had a, a good uh, a presence of, of chess uh, in most of the, the, the townships uh, um, around Free State. And one could see that in, in your tournaments, even in later years. Would you ascribe that to the development that, that you and Richard did in those years? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah, because we went all over the Free State. You know, we, we went to uh, what is now called Tawam uh, Futsunyani. We went to Hari which is the Southern Free State. Uh, in those days we had 12, at one stage we had 12 districts, now it's only five, but we went to all of them. I developed no. a whole Harib, every, every town in Harib, every school uh, was had a teacher that, that has gone through my hands, yeah. And Richard, but it, obviously. You, you've, uh, you've been part of chess development in the Free State for a very, very long time. And I just want to concentrate on the development for, for the moment. So, so in the 80s, you and Richard did, did this development, but um, I noticed on your CV that in some way in the mid 1990s, you had a meeting with the premier of the free state, uh, Mr. Teva Lakota. Tell, tell the viewers a bit about that meeting that you had with the premier. Yeah, it was a fascinating uh, thing that happened. One early morning, I, I received this, uh, uh, my phone rang, and I thought, who would phone me so early in the morning? And, and the guy on the other side said, uh, is that Peter van Sale speaking? Now that everybody knows me as Piet van Sale, except my family, they call me Peter. And the guy spoke fluent Afrikaans, uh, but he had a little like a, you know, this real Susuta accent. And I said, yes, I'm speaking. And he says, well, my name is, I don't think we call him um, Sia in those days, I think we all knew him as Terra Lakota or whatever. But anyway, he said, uh, uh, I'm Mr. Lakota, I'm the Premier of the Free State, and I would like to speak to you about chess. And I really thought it was someone playing the fool with me again, you know, I've got many friends like <laughs> that. And, um, but fortunately, I didn't say much. I said, okay, well, fine. Um, when do you want to see me? He says, well, um, I'll ask my secretary, Mrs. Africa, to phone you and set up a, a meeting with you. And I still, after I spoke to this guy, I thought, really, it's for someone playing the fool with me. So eventually, about well, half an hour later, I got a call from Mrs. Africa and she set up a meeting with, with Mr. Lakota. And then I really believed, okay, yeah, this is a real thing. So yeah. I, um, I asked Richard to go with me and we, the two of us went to see him in his office. And it was absolutely, it was magic to speak to this, to, to Mr. Lakota. He was, um, he told me some fascinating stories. I, I'm, if you allow me, I'll tell you one of them. Please, please go ahead. He, he said that um, they played chess in, at, at Robben Island, you know, and he was one of the naughty guys. So he would, they would go into solitary confinement and then they, they, they were allowed to take a chess board in with them, but not pieces. So they would play uh, then f from mind, you know. Then one one player will be a referee and the other two will play one another. He says, and then eventually all three of them had different positions and so on, and they nearly, nearly had fights afterwards and so on. But he said, Madiba, they called him the torturer because he only played one move per day. 
He says he, ne he needs a lot of time to think. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody wanted to play him because he only played one move per day. <laughs> no, it was no, it's fascinating to speak to him. Yeah, it was really nice. Uh, I, 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 uh, he was a fantastic man, and he opened a lot of doors for us. Um, and and so Pete, what nice came out of that meeting? What came out of that meeting with the Premier? You know, he um, he said, well, um, he, he'll find the guys at the Department of Sport and Education and I must just go and see them. I can just go in there and say, listen, Mr. Lakota said I can come and see you and he will find you also. So it opened a lot of doors of us, uh, for us. And what eventually happened was uh, we started a, a, um, out, of sc out of school or... Um, what was it called? Out of school youth tournament for players older than 18 years. Because uh, Mr. Lakota felt we do so much for the schools, but nothing for adults and people in out of school youth, for, for instance. So we started this uh, tournament for out of school youth. And uh, eventually we, we uh, launched 80 clubs in the townships. Little town not so far from Bloemfontein is called uh, Soutpan place called Itchumutseng had two clubs and we had clubs in every every township in, 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 in the Free State. It, it was more than 80 of them and eventually we uh, involved something like 10,000 uh, players in the Free State. Nobody knows about this but that is what happened. You know? that, that is what Mr. Lakota did for us and um, he would just organize 300 players from all over the Free State to to come together at Kronstadt and then we have to go and speak to them. You know, it was magic. It, uh, he was a wonderful person. No, but uh, Pete, that, that's a fantastic story and well done to, to you and the Premier and, and Richard and others for, for doing that development because one of the things that always fascinated uh, me when I was uh, following uh, chess was that uh, a small province like Free State always seem to have teams at the nationals and players all over coming to the SA Open. And um, I just realized that there must be a chess culture in the free state. Would you agree, uh, uh, Pete, that there's a chess culture that exists in Bloemfontein and, and in free state as a, as a whole? Definitely, uh, especially in those years, you know, and, and, and it was all Richard Morris, you know, that's that, he was such a great guy. Um, I don't know how he did it and where he got all the, he's like you. I always wondered where he got all the time to do all everything he's done. <laughs> but um, Richard was really, um, the man was so well organized and he did so much for chess, you know. Uh, if it wasn't for him, you and I wouldn't have been talking now. Really. Now, um, Pete, no, we, we definitely uh, uh, remember uh, the late Richard Morris and a uh, fantastic uh, chap and um, you know, uh, for the viewers out there, I met Pitt and Richard and others around about 2000 when, when we played in the inter-union against one another. And thereafter, uh, Pitt, uh, uh, perhaps we can uh, tell the viewers that, that I, I had this idea to have the inter-clubs uh, in a place like Bloemfontein in order to draw everybody. And that started a, a whole series of tournaments with the SA club champs. Uh, Pete, tell us a bit about how you experienced the organizing and playing in the SA clubs because you've done it for quite some time. Yeah, Lennon, I think we, we did about 10 uh, inter-clubs and, 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 and uh, inter-provincials, yeah. No, it was, um, it was, it took a bit of work, but we, 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 we really enjoyed um, hosting those tournaments, Lennon, because um, it was nice to have all the guys there. We had tournaments at Great College and Unici and all over, and it was really uh, nice to have the uh, to have it in Bloemfontein, especially because you know Bloemfontein is central, and um, we have fantastic schools and housing. You know, accommodation is 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 a big thing also. Yeah, no, yeah. it was great. Yeah. Now, uh, Pete, one of the things uh, uh, just to go back to your coaching just for for a last bit is that um, I noticed that you also did some coaching and you also used some mathematics uh, principles in some of the, the, the chess. Can you tell us a bit about your, your interest in mathematics and, 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 and if it had any effect on the chess coaching? Um, Brendan, in, in 2007, I, I started a, a um, chess academy uh, and my partner was a, um, 
a guy called Eugene Grunewald, and he was a mathematician, and he also had this uh, um, um, mathematics school, you know. So um, he then said to me, "Listen, why don't we combine the two, and we have a chess for um, a chess for math scores for teachers, but mathematics teachers, you know." So that's how the thing started, and uh, he he had brilliant ideas. He you know, he could, he, he taught those teachers how to draw a pyramid on a chessboard, you know, and um, did all sorts of mathematical problems on a chessboard. I wish I, I, I asked him to write a book on this and he's busy with that. So hopefully we, we, I can show you some um, of the work he has done already. It's absolutely fantastic what you can do on a chessboard. For instance, um, like uh, tables, you know. I, I said to this one kid, how, how much is three times three? And he says, no, well, he doesn't know. You know, I said, okay, look at the chessboard now. And I set out um, three rows of three, uh, three chess pieces each. And I said, okay, first row, how many there? Second row, how many there? Okay, he says, three, three, three. I said, okay, that, that's three times three. And after that, you know, I, I did a lot of uh, uh, tables where eventually he was one of the top guys in the tables. Whereas at first he couldn't do tables, you know. So yeah. It, uh, Eugene did some fantastic work with, with the teachers. And um, it's a pity that we stopped with that. Um, I don't think Mr. Eismakashule was, he was not in the same caliber as, as, um, uh, as um, Mr. Lakota. I don't think he liked chess as much as Mr. Lakota did. <laughs> Well, Pete, I think, uh, but it would be great if we do have a, a book like that, because uh, very interestingly, I know that um, uh, Dr. Ieso completed a, a PhD in checkmating HIV AIDS, and uh, Professor Bertie van Weyck completed uh, his master's in chess and memory recall, and uh, Dr. Denise uh, Bauer also completed a, a, a master's using chess as a as a therapeutic tool. So I'm sure your, that, the, that book uh, will certainly complement some of that academic writing as, uh, as well. But uh, Pete, one of the things that always fascinated me about uh, the chess in free state and, and your involvement was uh, all the schools that, uh, that you were involved in in training. And, and this always seemed to be nearly all the, the schools in Bloemfontein because it didn't matter what event it was. We could play at Unisi, we could play at Gray, we could play at literally any of the venues and they would all have chess teams. Uh, was that something that, that was just ingrained in the schools? Yeah, that was also something that was started by Richard in, in, in the early years, you know. Um, so like you said, we had a chess culture in Bloemfontein. All schools played chess. You know, and I coached most of them. I, I coached Great College for many years. As you, uh, uh, I started that one tournament um, that they have had for the last 18 years or something like that. Uh, I coached at, um, I think at every school. I, I can't remember. But, but, but then, of course, there are about 50 schools in Bloemfontein, so I might have missed a few. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, no, no. Anyway. Pete, one of the exciting things for me was to have seen you you uh, go to, to India uh, as a coach for the Commonwealth. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, Lyndon, that was uh, something that happened out of the blue. I was I was at the police championships in, in uh, somewhere in the country. I don't, can't remember where. And I got this call and said, listen, I, will you be prepared to go to India? And I said, yes, I'll go to India. And it was a great experience to, to, be, to go to, to India. Unfortunately, I didn't have much to do there because uh, you know, we didn't have a proper place to, to coach and so on. I had to coach in the room, which wasn't very nice and so on. And then the, we were, I think we were 23 in the group and we all became sick. I shared oh, a room no. with Charles de Villiers and I don't know how he managed to play because he was really, really sick. We all got the dreaded deli belly and yeah, so it was tough. No, it, but it, it, India was an experience that you, you have to experience and smell the place to. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> now, Pete, one of the, the, the fascinating... Yes, Calvin? Yes, yes. 
That's fine. Uh, Calvin, I just wanted to, to, to indicate to the viewers that one of the nice things that Peter has received was a very nice accolade uh, from Free State Chess. And, um, and for me, when I saw it, I, I thought it aptly described uh, 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 Pit van Sale um, for what he has done for chess in, in, in the Free State. Um, Pit, don't you want to tell us a bit about this award uh, uh, that you received uh, there in Free State? I received that actually from Chesa, and it was the doings of, of Mike Pond. Um, uh, I was at a Chesa meeting and they called me and, and they gave me this, uh, this award. And it, I must tell you, uh, Lyndon, it was the greatest award I've ever received. I've won a lot of trophies and I've received a lot of medals and stuff and whatever, but that was the greatest uh, award I've ever received. No, uh, I told you the and other well, day left. Sorry. <laughs> and well and well deserved. I'm sure we, we'll show the, the viewers in a moment. Uh, Pete, I'm going to hand you over to Calvin for a few minutes. Uh, uh, there's one or two questions in the in the chat box. Um, Calvin, over to you. All right. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Landon. Um, yeah, and we just actually just showed the, the, the award while you guys were talking about it. Or what, what an amazing award it was. So uh, I actually told one Peter when I saw this that the award is actually older than what I am by quite a bit. So a lot of years he has put into chess. Um, so yeah, um, let's see. So we've got one or two questions in the chat box. One Pit, um, let's see. What do we have here? Um, I think we've got two questions for now and uh, maybe one or two statements, but let's see. Uh, maybe let's start off with a statement here. I think it was from uh, Roland Soji. Yeah, just welcome to everybody and uh, thanks to the new followers as well. So let's see. First statement that I saw here is um, from Roland. And that's, of course, from Roland Willenberg last um, week's special guest. And Roland says here, it's a privilege to have a legend like Pete Van Zyl on this program. Hi, Pete. I need to visit Bloom Organize and Over the Board event. So that's the first thing that uh, Roland said there in the chat box. Um, let's see. So let's get to our first question. Right. So then, yeah, Roland also. Uh, so Roland actually went on and asked the question. Hi, Pete. Did you do an international coach stint with the juniors as a coach? Um, did you enjoy the experience? So that's the first question, Pete. No. Uh I don't really understand the question that I do. Um, yeah. That's the one that you went to India with, uh, uh, Pete. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, that was, yeah. Uh, so, so can you tell us maybe any experience? Or was it enjoyable at least, um, Pete, uh, this, this trip, this international trip with the juniors? Yes, it was magic. You know, um, a lot of stories coming from that as well. I'll, I'll, I'll skip a few, but... Um, it was, it was an, exp you know, India uh, was an experience that you cannot, especially the chess. Uh, they must be about light years ahead of us, really. It was, it was, it was such an experience to see those youngsters, small boys with 2,300 ratings, you know, it was, I couldn't believe it. Um, I spoke to one of the coaches there and he says that in India, you're not allowed to coach if your rating is under 2,300. So we in South Africa will have a bit of a battle, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if, uh, if that is uh, applied to us. But um, yes, it was magic to see what happens in India. I mean, it was 10 years ago. And you can just see what happened in the meantime, what happened in India. I don't know how many grandmasters they have now. It's incredible. Um, I think they had something like 2 million registered players at the time. Uh, it doesn't sound much if you think they are about a thousand million people there, a billion people, but um, I promise you a million, a 2 million people is a lot of players. And yes. I, I wonder what it's now. I would, I, I'd really, I, it must be, I've doubled since then. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right, thanks. And yeah, I, it's a fascinating place, yeah. I can say as well, I, I played uh, at the Commonwealth Games uh, maybe a year or two ago in India. And uh, the competition is really tough there. Everybody plays hard. I actually had one loss for the event, and that was against an under-12 boy. So, uh, yeah, they play hard. <laughs> so, okay. So then the second question we have, um, 
for now is uh, from Kaiser 500, and I believe that is um, from where am I now? Did Kaiser, yeah, Kaiser 500 is Francois Stradom. Francois Stradom also just said, Thanks, Calvin, for your wonderful initiative and honoring SA's chess stalwarts. This is my first time logging in on your channel, even before looking at GM uh, Ikaru. That's, that's <laughs> great to hear. And I like what I see from Francois Stradom. And then his question is um, I would like to know from uh, uh, Pitt against which visiting Grand Masters. Did uh, you play in the course um, of your chess career and which game was the, was the most memorable? So did you play any GMs or bit? Yeah, I've played quite a few, yeah. All right. Um, I played against, um, let me just think, what was the Austrian guy's name? Um, Carl Robach. Robert, yeah, I played against Robach. I played against uh, Quinteros. I played against... Um, Oh yes, I played. Obviously, I played against Kasparov. Sure, um, sounds great. I played against, yeah, Kasparov was quite an experience. <laughs> um, I played against um, uh, George. What was the guy's name? Gregory. Okay. Yes, yes, from Romania. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice, nice guy. I, I really liked him. But, um, yes. Um, so, so Kaisa was one, asking which one was maybe the most memorable to you? Which one of those games? I think Quinteros. I think the game against Quinteros was, a, was, was what, my most memorable one. Uh, the most forgettable one is Kasparov, but I won't go into that. <laughs> but, um, but Quinteros, yes. Uh, I really enjoyed my game. I was actually uh, doing very well against him, but like most grandmasters, he took me into the end game and he smashed me. But I, I came out better in the opening and I was doing well in the middle game. But somewhere he just got, he got all of me and uh, he went into a better end game and he beat me out. All right. That was a good one. Fantastic. I mean, it's always nice playing GMs and you've got quite a bit of experience there. One bit. So, so yeah, we've got one more question over here um, or maybe even two now. How many, how much time... Do we have, Lyndon, uh, can we go for one more question, then we'll take the rest? No, no, you can go for both can questions we take because both? We, we're still well on time, yeah. Okay, fantastic. So, Jody Roman V1 says, good evening to the panel. I would like to know what Mr. Van Zyl thinks chess essay should invest in to develop more high-level chess players and even GMs. So, what should the chess essay invest in? Which chess essay? <laughs> That's maybe the first question. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was just a joke. Um, yeah, no, you know, we, 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 the, the problem is I see it, we invest a, a lot in our juniors, but we do nothing for our, like, you know, when we had that course, uh, that, that tournament for the out of school youth, that, that is what we, we should invest in. Um, we do everything for schools, but we do nothing for out of school youth and for our adults, you know. I think we must invest in our adults. We are losing our, um, our juniors. Through the years, if I think back about all the juniors that have gone through my hands, how many are left? They have gone, where are they? What happened to them? It's because nothing is being done for our out of school youth and our adult chess. I think that's where we must invest. All right, thanks. Um... Yes, so so yeah, I also uh, like that answer to that one. And then, um, yeah, we've got a couple more questions rolling in. Thanks to everybody for asking questions. So Monster Frick, that's of course Jacques Frick. Uh, he says, Mr. Van Zyl, reflecting back onto your chess career and vast experience, who would you say you enjoyed working or playing with? Uh, just one man, Richard Morris. Aha, uh -huh. yes, I heard you uh, talking about him. All the way, yeah. He was, he, you know, he was, he was not just, a, 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 he was a, my mentor, he was my father. He was only four years older than me, but it never felt like that. You know, I looked up to the man and um, he was, um, he was a brilliant player, but he also sold his, unfortunately, sold his chest to, to other people, uh -huh. other people's chess. You know, he, he developed, he, he believed in developing chess instead of, um, doing something about his own chest, which was possibly the strongest player I've ever played against, you know.
it's a pity that he, he couldn't carry on with his game, but um, he was like me, you know, we, we believe in spreading the gospel of chess, you know, and, and instead of uh, spending more time on our own chess, you know. But I enjoyed it. It was, I, I always realized I would never be able to become a grandmaster or anything. All I wanted to be was the number one player in the free state, and that I managed to do. And uh, after that, I was happy and I went on with uh, developing chess. And uh, Richard did the same. I think he did exactly the same. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, okay. I've got one more question and just a funny statement here as well uh, by King Ulster. King Ulster says, One pit. Yes, Chessa jokes for Africa, and then he's laughing over there. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so let's see. And, and in fact, the question is also from King Oster. King Oster says, um, for one pit, which was the most challenging club started um, which you needed to be started from scratch? And what do you see as a good approach today? So, yeah, which was the most challenging club started which needed to be started from scratch? You know, I, I, I started a lot of uh, clubs in, in, in the rural areas. So, yeah, there was, I wouldn't say there was anyone that I would think was the most challenging one. Um, I, the clubs like the clubs I played in were started long before I, I got there. Um, but in the rural areas, I've, I've started a lot of clubs and some of them are still going. You know, it's a pity that... Um, you have to service these clubs and you have to have um, leagues and stuff like that. If you don't have that, the clubs die. And unfortunately, um, many of our clubs died because we didn't service them or um, let them play in leagues and so on. All right. But challenging? No, I don't think it was any, any club. You know, uh, Bloemfontein Club, just to give you an idea, next year Bloemfontein Club will be 100 years old. Sure. Okay. It's a very old club. You know. All right. Fantastic. Okay. So I think I'm going to um, stop there with the questions. We will give uh, the, the viewers more time at the end of the show. So please do leave your questions in the chat box and we will, at the end of the show, give, uh, give, um, give you guys a chance um, for those questions. Okay. Thanks, Landon. Over to you. Thanks, Wumpit. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Calvin. And... Uh... Well, Pitt can certainly see that there's a lot of questions from, from the viewers. Um, and earlier we examined your, your role as, as, a, as a coach. Uh, what is your coaching philosophy, uh, Pitt, when it comes to, to, to coaching a youngster to get from 1,200 to, to the next level that he needs to be? What, what is your philosophy? Do you go for openings, middle game, end game? What do you think? Uh, perhaps you can just share your philosophy with us. You know, Lyndon, um, I have a simple philosophy for me, and I listened to Roland last week, and I, um, Roland's got, got um, what, what all coaches need. He's got, um, uh, what, what, what is the word I'm looking at? He's, um, Come on, if you can't say it, I'm like, how translate? No, it's enthusiasm, you know. Roland was so enthusiastic. It, it was contagious, you know, and 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 passion. And I think that those are the things that every coach needs. You know, you don't need a lot of other things, as long as you're passionate, and 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 uh, enthusiastic, and you can instill that in your students. Then you need very little else, you know. And I think the secret of of most. Uh, Oh, the best coaches, the, 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 the best kept secret is the fact that you, if you can get your student to help himself, you know, many, uh, if you can't get your student to help himself to do self-study, then you've lost him, you know, mm. and that is something that's not so easy and is to get your students to help themselves. I remember students that I got um, that all I did was change their openings and they became top players, you know, so it's a simple philosophy. Just just get them to be enthusiastic and passionate about the game. Love the game. No, uh, Pete, thank you very much for, for, for that. And and it's it can't 
you, you can't go wrong with self-study uh, uh, as well. And I mean, that's something that I still enjoy um, as, as well, because, you know, there's so, so many good books out there and online programs nowadays. But at the end, you've got to invest some of your own time as, as well. Pete, thank you for, for, for that. I, I want to go to your other role now because you were a coach. We, we know that you were a free state champion as, as well. Um, and in the last few years, you've also been an arbiter. And uh, you've, you've been an arbiter at different SA Opens. I, I've seen you. Uh, you've been at all the clubs and the interprovincials. Tell us a bit about the, your role as an arbiter. And, and do you enjoy being an arbiter more than being a player? Lennon, yes. <laughs> um, no. Player, play, player will always come first. I'll always be a player. Um, uh, being an arbiter was sort of, I needed to be an arbiter because uh, we, we were, we started the police championships, you know, developing the police in, in 2004, around about there. And um, I, I needed to qualify as an arbiter to be able to uh, run these tournaments for the police, you know. So that's why I qualified as an arbiter, but I really enjoyed being an arbiter. I worked with uh, um, some of the greatest guys, you know, like I worked with Gunter, uh, um, Professor Skombi. It was fantastic working with him. And yes, I enjoyed being an arbiter. I don't think I was a, a very good arbiter. I don't think <laughs> players, players make good arbiters. Uh, but what I always tried as an arbiter is to create an atmosphere where players feel safe, where they feel I'm not a policeman. Uh, I've played in some tournaments where the arbiters are really like policemen. They jump all over you and they I interfere and everything and so on. I, I, I tried not to be like that. I tried to be, um, to think, uh, about the players as well. Being a player, I, I knew what players think and how they feel. And I try to always try to create that atmosphere to make them feel safe at the tournament and, and comfortable. No, thanks. Uh, thanks, Pete. I think that is always something that, that is welcome. And I want to ask you about some of your, your, your role within the South African Police Service chess, chess team, because, uh, you know, it was Nemzovic who said that the passport is like a criminal that must be locked up. But at the same time, you have been developing the South African Police Chess Services. Tell us a bit about uh, about that, uh, Pete. Um, you know, we started with them in, I think, around about 2004. I, I became very involved since uh, 2005. It was also Richard Morris that drew me into this. Um, but um, I really enjoyed the police uh, developing them. We started off with 10 players. Um, at one stage, we, we played against them. The police team played against Free State. And I remember in the first tournament, we played against them. Um, we beat them 10 naught, and they were actually a bit lucky to get the naught. Uh, <laughs> but nowadays, the police force, they've got 140 players playing in their tournaments now, you know, yearly. And, and uh, they've got some top players. And last year, I ran into the number one, who is um, Dale Pond. Is it Dale? Or... Yeah, Dale. Yeah. Uh, I believe he's left, he's overseas now. But he played board one for police last year, and he didn't win the tournament. So you, you can imagine uh, the police have improved immensely since 2005. Yeah. No, but thanks for that. And, and we have seen uh, uh, the police presence at many SA Opens. Uh, one of the SA Opens here in Cape Town in 2015 or 2016, we had about uh, 30 policemen that uh, were the first to register for the tournament as, uh, as well. So uh, they, they have certainly come a long uh, way as well. But in the last 20 years, Free State has organized the SA Opens. You've organized the various club championships as well and the nationals. What has been your favorite tournament in Bloemfontein to play or organize? Lyndon, I, I really enjoyed the uh, interprovincials that we had uh, and the interclubs, those were great. Uh, we've had, um, I actually started in 1986 with the SA Schools Championships. That's where I met Duarte Kubisi and um, um, what was the other guys? Um, 
But anyway, that was the first. That was the, the first tournament that I had, and I actually played against uh, SA Schools team that year. Uh, they selected a, 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 a free state team uh, to play against the SA Schools, and I played against Yanni Knife. I think I believe he's still around in Cape Town. In Cape Town, yeah, he's a prosecutor here yeah, in Cape Town. Um, can you imagine? We were there. Were there were only three hundred players in nineteen eighty six, but I must tell sure. you that. Um, the SA schools team was very, it was a very, very strong team. Um, yes, and Justin Wilkin, that was another guy I met in 1986. Yeah. Then uh, we had a, f a few um, SAJCC tournaments in Bloomfield. In, in I think we had two, three, we had three, yeah. And we had two SA Opens, three SA Opens, Three SA Opens in Bloemfontein. Ach, Lyndon, I enjoyed them all. You know, I, uh, it was always nice for me to be involved in the um, in, in organizing these tournaments. I really must tell you. But the clubs and the interclubs, I really enjoyed them as well. Now, I must say, Pete, uh, from my side, I mean, it was always great. You know, traveling from Cape Town, uh, it's a 12-hour journey to Bloemfontein. And uh, I started that journey with my Ford Tracer, and later on, we went over to the Pajero, but we always knew that we were going to have a good tournament in Bloemfontein, no matter what, because we knew that uh, Pitt and Richard and, and others were organizing the event. So, I mean, well done to, to, to you and uh, to, to your colleagues for organizing such great events on that side. And I mean, I was looking at my games the other day, quite a lot of games uh, were played in Bloemfontein, so the conditions were, were very favorable. Um, Pitt, I've got one or two more questions that I'm going to end off with on the show, but I'm just going to let Calvin ask uh, some questions from the viewers because there's been more questions in the chat box for you, uh, Pete, that uh, people would like your opinion on. Uh, Calvin, over to you. Wait, can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay, now I'm back fully. Yeah. My, my voice wasn't uh, on there. So yeah, okay, so I'm back. And just to continue where we left off, so one quit was saying good evening, uh, everyone. And um, one quit was asking, uh, how can clubs keep active in the age of online chess? So there's your first question, one bit. How can clubs keep active in the age of online chess? You know, it's always... Always m much nicer to play over the board. Um, you know, I, I play a lot of internet chess. I, I, I checked today, I played something like 6,000 games on Lee Chess. And, uh, it's very nice to play online, but it's not the same thing. Um, to keep a club active, uh, one, one of us have a proper um, uh, management, you know, have decent meetings and have enough tournaments, I have a lot of uh, tournaments every year. You know, a club dies quickly when you start playing blitz. Every week you go there and you sit there and play blitz. And that's all you do. You have to, and that was that what I learned from Richard Morris. Every single week there's something on. There's either the Byro Cup or the Bloemfontein Chess Championship or the, uh, I won all those cups, so I know them. Uh, he, uh, and that's why I went back because every week there was a tournament, you know. But a club dies when you don't have tournaments and you're not active, you know. So the question is, how do you keep it active? Play tournaments, play as many as you can. And 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 then I think something that clubs must look at: uh, you must have a proper league. That is the secret in Western in Western Cape. I mean, uh, there are so many clubs because they have a decent league. And when you have a decent league. Uh, uh, and you uh, like when I came to Free State in the beginning, we had a league where even schools played in. Great College played in the Free State League. They had three guys, three school guys with 2,000 ratings, you know. And um, the stronger your league, the stronger your, 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 your junior players. So, yeah, to keep it active, play a lot of tournaments, club tournaments, and have a league. 
Yes, fully agree. And it's just a bit more difficult during the, these times, but yes, definitely fully agree. Yeah, now, of course, now, of course, it's not easy. I mean, uh, I told Lyndon earlier tonight, I had my last beer on the 19th of February because that's the last time I've been, I've played a game over the board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So thanks for that. And then now the next, oh yeah, I just want to read, uh, like, like, as I continue, I like to read some statements and so on. So one statement from Monster Frick, um, uh, that's of course Jacques. Uh, Jacques says, uh, thank you, Mr. Van Zyl, for your time tonight and sharing some of your wonderful experiences with us. We are and will always be looking up to you, exclamation mark. Thanks uh, for that, Jacques. And uh, then the second question from Winquit. So Winquit is asking you, uh, question number two, what is Wimpit's opinion on time controls in tournaments moving towards faster games, such as all the rapid and blitz events? And what is the effect of many players playing Bullet and Blitz online? Well, you know, um, in my day, we, we never played less than, than a 90-90. I, I, we, we played one hour, 30 minutes. That was the, that was the least that we played. And then later on, this 60-60 thing came in. And, you know, you compare that with, with one day um, cricket. It's not chess. The longer you play, the better you calculate. You know, I I have this, I have the experience that I, I play a lot of bullet, and okay. there's a, actually a, a, another word for bullet. I'm not going to use it now. <laughs> uh, it's not good for chess to play a lot of bullet, but I love it because I have nothing to prove or nothing. I'm not playing anymore, but I discourage my students to play bullet. It's not good for them. Blitz, fine. I, I don't have a problem with blitz, but the longer you play, the better you have le learned to calculate. And I think our youngsters today have difficulty calculating. Um, so yes, I would rather prefer longer games than we are the 60-60s and stuff we're playing at the moment. I realize it's not so easy anymore. The time is, is it's difficult to have long tournaments. Uh, I remember we, we played on Sundays, which, which doesn't happen anymore. Um, but my own preference, longer games. Okay, thanks. Thanks so much for that. And um, yeah, that, that's maybe a hint there for you viewers out there. Um, you should maybe make some time to play a bit of longer games, even if it's just some rappers and so on online. Um, even like the Olympiad online was, was long, a bit longer. So um, not just bullet. Okay, so uh, I think I've got one more question here and then later on I'll read the final statement there as well. Um, so um, Roland again here is, is asking, well, Pete, if you were Chesa president for one month with a 2 million rand budget at your disposal, what changes would you implement? So, uh, yeah, there's your question. <laughs> He's saying actually Roland. tough one. <laughs> That's typical Roland. That's a tough one. Yeah. No. Um, John Pitt, can, can you actually just move slightly to your right? Because we, there we go. There we go. Sorry. No, perfect. Um, no, really, that, that's a very difficult one. Um, first of all, I'll fire everybody that's there at the moment <laughs> and start from scratch. And um, I, would, I, would, I would really get rid of everyone at, in chess at the moment. I'm, I'm really disgusted what's happening in chess. It's sad. I, I was hoping to retire and move out of chess and see a beautiful future for us. But at the moment, it's, it's really sad. So if I had 2 million, I would fire the lot and start from scratch and get some decent people in there. And I'm not saying they're not decent, but it's time that they sit around the table and, and get chess going in South Africa. It's really I'm disgusted what is, what is happening at the moment, really. Um, and I don't care if they don't like what I'm saying, but they should get their, their, their ducks in a row and get to choose going again in South Africa. Okay, thanks so much. And, 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 and I will spend two million on chess, not on myself. Aha, uh -huh. so so there you have it, guys. So first of all, first and foremost, you, you have to renovate Chesa, says one pit. Okay, so um, yeah, I think that's all the questions for now. So I'm just going to read this final statement here as well, Lyndon. Did you say you've got um, 
another question for for Pete. So should I leave this? There's a nice, a nice statement here at the end. Shall I leave it for later, or can I read it out now? No, no, no. Let let me just ask the 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 final two questions uh, for Pete. All right. Uh, for Pete, uh, one question that I I've always wondered about is. Uh, to compare chess in the 80s, 90s with the, the modern age now in the sort of last 20 years, um, what would you say has changed uh, from those years, from those two decades, 80s, 90s, to now in the millennium? Listen, you know, uh, we, lived in, we live in completely different worlds, you know. Um, I, when I f- first came into, especially in Bloemfontein, you know, we had these longer tournaments. Um, clubs were very strong. You know, uh, Bluefin Club had 70 members on a, on, a, on a Thursday evening playing. I, when, when, when you joined the Bluefin Club, you had to start in the D section, you know, and work your way up to the A section. And then when you reach the A section, they knock you back to the B section. You know? So clubs were very strong in those days. Um, I don't know what has happened to our clubs. Maybe it's a technology, maybe. Uh, I think there are a lot of factors. Uh, let me give you an example. We, we spoke about the league in, um, in 1978, the Transvaal League. I mean, you could travel to uh, Joburg and to, to uh, Pretoria and, and it was easy. Uh, traffic wasn't so bad and so on. In 2011, uh, I played a game in Hilbra. Uh, I, I played against the Hainas. I was lucky to get a, I played for Watercliff. Uh, they, they shorted the player. Uh, I hope I, I may say this, but anyway, I played against uh, the Hainas uh, in Hilbra. And we traveled from Boxburg to uh, Hilbra. And that was a nightmare, the traffic. When I was a youngster in the 70s and 80s, well, 60s basically, in the 70s, uh, and maybe early 80s, Boxburg was a town. Now it's a huge city. And I cannot see myself traveling now in this traffic uh, and playing in a league. So uh, there's a huge difference between um, um, conditions of those years and conditions today. And I worry about clubs. Our clubs are dying. I don't know why. I don't know what your secret is in, in, in Western Cape, London, because you guys are doing brilliantly there with all your clubs, active clubs, your active league. If we can follow suit, okay, every, we, uh, we are much different than you guys are. We, we don't have the, so many feet and, and uh, the peninsula is a big area. But, um, but even if we only have 10 active clubs in, in, in the free state, it'll help a lot. But it's so difficult to get clubs started. And I was asked the question about what's the most difficult club to, to, uh, to, to get started. And that must be, um, now that I think about it, it must be the University of the Free State. Um, I don't know how many, time, many times I've tried to get that club going, get it started. I've had so many meetings. Puli and I, Puli Mangunyan and I have been there many times trying to get these guys going. Just as soon as we get them going, I don't know what happens to the students, whether they lose interest or they stop studying. I don't know what it is, but then the club dies. And it's such a big university. And they get players from all over South Africa, strong players, 18, 1900 players that come, that come here and to study. And we can't get those guys to play and, and start a proper club. You know? And that, that bothers me. What is mm. happening? Why can't we get the guys started? Why can't we get proper clubs running? Uh, no, but uh, Pete, thank you very much for, for that. It's a very important point. That's uh, something that is close to my heart as well, is, is club chess, because I, I sincerely believe that you must build social cohesion and you start that off at the local community club and then you work your way through there. So, so Pete, uh, um, you, you could not have said a truer word Pete, from my side, I'm going to hand over to Calvin uh, uh, to end the show. But thank you very much for agreeing to be our guest tonight. Um, I have certainly enjoyed our conversations and our and our discourse over the last 20 years that that we've known one another, and uh, we value your opinion, uh, Pete, and uh, and all that you've done for chess. So from my side, thank you very much for agreeing to to be a, a guest tonight. And I'm going to hand you over to Calvin for for the final words. Thank you very much, Pete. 
Okay, yeah, well, right, right. I'm back. Um, so yeah, so um, let's see. We've got the final two statements. Um, uh, Adrian says, "Very, very proud of my father." So uh, that's Adrian in the chat over there. Um, okay, so we've lost the uh, the guys over there. Let's just see. We've lost Ms. Wimpit from Zoom, London. Um, oh. So yeah, I, I I wonder if we can get him back because now yeah, everything has shifted here in Zoom. Let's let's just give it a moment. Yeah, let's just give it a moment. I'll just try to get out of him. Yeah, so so let's let's hope we can get uh, one pit back. So so yeah, let's see what do we have here in the chat box. Uh, two nice statements. I'd love to have one pit with us for these statements. So let's just uh, hang ten guys for 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 a bit, and um, yeah, no, I've I've fully enjoyed this over here, this 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 session. Um, I think the first time I met one Pit, I, I don't even know it was many years ago at some interprovincials, probably in Bloemfontein or Interclub or something like that. And one Pit always a gracious host, and um, I can only say good things about him. Um, so yeah, um, are we? Where are we getting over there, London? Are you in contact with with Wimpit? Uh, Wimpit is not picking up his phone, but maybe we need to fetch the the charger for the laptop, uh, Calvin. But I think while we're waiting for for Wimpit just to close the show, I just want to say that uh, you know the the work that Wimpit has done in Bloemfontein and in the Free State generally has been tremendous. The the fact that they have so many players that participate in the SAJCC, the the fact that they always have uh, clubs coming through in the provincials. Um, it has really been astounding there, the, the hard work and the good work that has actually been done uh, in the free state by by people like like Pitt Van Sale, Richard Morris and others. But in my case, uh, uh, Pitt and I have had a, a very solid relationship for the last 20 years where we were able to call upon one another for assistance and, uh, and in fact, uh, analyzing some of the games that, uh, that, that we play and that we see as, as well. And it's always been good to be able to have people like Wimpit uh, um, that, that knows his chest as well, because he himself was a 2000 rated player in his day. And, uh, you know, uh, when he was board one for, for Free State back in the 80s, uh, that was the era when they had 20 players uh, close to 2000 and beyond. So uh, he was certainly a strong player in his own day as, as well. So, uh, Calvin, uh, uh, a lot can be said about uh, Wimpit's contribution uh, as well. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm, and, and I'm pretty sure you know him, Peter, a lot better than, than I do. I still have lots to hear from him. But uh, yeah, thanks for that. And maybe we should just go into the chat box a bit here, Lyndon, and let's hope we get one Pete back soon. Um, you, guys, yeah. you guys can see my name over there in one Pete's box because I usually remove myself from Zoom. Um, but since he left, then everything scrambled up. So just to get Lyndon in sure. properly, I did that. So um, let's see. Um, I've got I've got one Pit here with me on the phone. Hello, Pit. He... Yeah. No, no, that's fine. Calvin is just going to read something, uh, a Pit, to you. I'm going to put you closer to the phone. So, Calvin, please go ahead and read. All right. So we're going to continue like this. So um, let's see where to start. So Dr. Queenie has a nice statement here for us. Um, Dr. Queenie says, Chesa should involve people like Wim Pitt for advice and guidance in coaching, management of players and administration. He and others like Roland have so much experience and our country will do well by getting their input all around. Their wisdom is an asset for us and should be tapped into respectfully. Thanks for that, Dr. Queenie. And um, then we've got another statement here by uh, Monster Frick. Monster Frick says, Thank you, Calvin and Lennon, for hosting another epic episode for, of Reflections with a well-respected individual in our chess community, Mr. Piet van Zijl! Um, yes, and then, of course, this, that, that comment there, comment there by, by Adrian, very, very proud of my father. Uh, thanks for that. And then, let's see, we've got one more, um, yeah, I see yeah, Adrian was saying, yeah, my father's checking his internet connection. So there, there must have been something wrong over there. Uh, I hope we start. Yeah, right, so we've got the one Put last thing. 
All right, so uh, what, what is One Pitch's status over there? Is he going to join us again, or is this the end? No, no, his, his internet connection went down for some reason okay. there uh, in, in Bloomfontein, okay, but so he I, said thank you to, to everyone. All right, no, that's fantastic. I think this is anyway the last comment. So, um, yeah, so King of the says here, thanks again to special hosts Lyndon and Calvin and esteemed guest One Pit. Um, yeah, deep and engaged insights. Uh, right, so... Um, yeah, guys, uh, London. Who? This was a brilliant episode. Episode, but who do we have for for Thursday? This coming Thursday, guys. Just to repeat, this coming Thursday, uh, Heritage Day. Who do we have, London? Yes, uh, Calvin. Just to note that uh, Heritage Day, twenty four September at six six p.m. Not seven p.m. At six p.m., um, we're going to be having live from Mauritius, Patrick Lee Ying, uh, who's a very good friend of South Africa, and uh, Patrick has. Uh, being somebody that I met at the Chess Olympiad in uh, 1994 already. And uh, Patrick has agreed to be uh, our guest uh, on Thursday on Heritage Day. And he'll be telling us about Chess in Mauritius and, uh, and about his travels uh, with Chess. Fantastic. So I'm looking forward to this one, guys. Uh, there you have it, a nice special for our Heritage Day. And uh, yeah, so I just want to say thanks to 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 uh, one pit as well for joining us it's been uh, like like the guy said in the chat box epic to have one pit over here i'm very happy with all my guests thus far and i'm just getting more and more excited every time guys so yeah thanks to one pit and thanks again to you london for hosting a nice show and um yeah, is there anything else that we need to mention i think that's about it from my side don't forget to press the follow button if you are new to the show and uh, i hope you guys enjoyed the evening london anything else from your side no, Calvin, thank you very much to, to you. And uh, I think when Pete had some brilliant insights and one shows that there's a, there's a culture uh, um, in free state uh, um, of chess uh, over the last few decades. And it is something that we should all be proud of in this uh, Heritage Month as well. Thanks, Calvin. All right, fantastic. So uh, thanks to everybody for watching. And I hope you, you enjoy your evening further and see you in two days' time, 6 p.m. for our next Reflection Show. Thanks, everybody. Have a nice evening. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye.